Hey everyone, it's Blade, and today I'm switching to iPhone. To be exact, this iPhone 11 product red. So today, in this video, I want to share with you the things that I hated, loved, and didn't care about during my week with iPhone. Let's get started. Is it my first iPhone? No. I had an experience with iPhone 3, 4, 5. In between, I had a small break to BlackBerry 9900. It was an amazing phone, but everyone in school had it, so I also asked my parents to get me one BlackBerry so we could use BlackBerry Messenger. My last iPhone was iPhone 7 Plus, and after spending two years with it, I got really bored and I decided to switch to Galaxy S10 Plus. Even with experience of jailbreaking my iPhone to change the themes, colors, and the whole experience of iPhone, the new iOS releases didn't bring any fun to everyday use of my phone. Therefore, knowing that Android allows you to change everything in your phone, I decided to go with Galaxy S10 Plus. After having a great experience with S10 Plus, I decided to upgrade to Galaxy S21 Ultra, which if you are interested in, you can find the video on my channel here. However, my phone contract is ending really soon and in order to keep my phone, I have to pay a lot of money or I can just upgrade to a newer model. Unfortunately, I don't want to switch to the current gen of foldable devices from Samsung because I know that September will bring Galaxy Fold 5 and Flip 5, as well as Google supposed to have their event on May 10th where they might present the Pixel foldable. Therefore, a friend of mine was really kind to lend me his iPhone 11. To be fair to this phone, I have to mention that it was released a year before my S21 Ultra, plus the retail price was 50% less than S21 Ultra. Because of that, I'm not gonna look into the hardware specs of this iPhone, because it's just not gonna be fair. The lack of telephoto lens, it does bother me, but again, that's a hardware and not an iPhone issue. On the iPhone 13 and 14, you do have a telephoto lens. So 90% of this video will be my frustration with iOS and maybe some things at the end that I actually liked about using an iPhone. However, the first thing, it's not something that iPhone does better than Android, and that's gestures. Android allowed me to make my custom gestures and my favorite one was the back function where I just had to swipe from right to left and I could even exit the app to the home screen using the same gesture. However, if I needed to, I can also use the swipe from bottom to the top of the screen the same way you have to exit on iPhone. Unfortunately, this is the only way to exit the app on iPhone and that's okay. But in order to go back in the app, what you have to do is you have to stretch your finger across the whole screen, grab it on the left side and make the swipe throughout the whole screen. I don't think that that's comfortable and to be honest, you can get used to this, but you cannot say that this is a good ergonomics of the UI. The other gesture that I'm not a fan of is the swipe on the middle of the screen. 90% of my most used apps are located on the first two screens. However, the rest of the pages had the apps that I installed like a month ago or that I use at least maybe once or twice a week. So I don't even need the search function to be as easy accessible as it is. The thing that I need every day is notification panel. And in order to get it on the iPhone, I have to stretch my finger or shuffle around the phone in my hand just to try to pull down the top bar to the bottom on the left side to be precise or in the middle to open the notification panel. To open the control center with all of the quick settings, you have to pull up from the right side. On my Galaxy, the simple swipe in the middle of the screen without pulling my finger was the actual notification panel, including the control center. If I needed more settings, I could pull it twice with the same gesture without trying to do some exercise with my fingers and I'll get the whole array of settings. And in addition to that, I could customize them. Every single one of them. Well, except for the brightness. I'm not really sure if you can change it or not. It's neatly done on one UI, so I didn't care about this. iPhone, on the other hand, 
gives you two separate screens, full screens, one for notification that looks like a lock screen and each time confuses me thinking that I locked my phone accidentally. And the second is the control panel. It includes many useful features that I use every single day. For example, airplane mode, because I fly every day, or a mobile data toggle, because we live in 2015 and I only have two gigs of data available on my phone. That's why multiple times a day I have to turn it off. And of course, the most important feature is screen mirroring. Because of course, I have a couple Apple TVs at my house and I love to show my photos of Lego collection to friends of mine when they come over. Of course, Apple Control Center has more useless things like brightness and volume control. But in addition to that, at least we get Wi-Fi pause button. No, it doesn't turn off the Wi-Fi, it just pauses it for a specific amount of time because that what people do in Apple ecosystem. And if you press a square on top of the control panel, it will open up bringing more useful features such as AirDrop and Mobile Hotspot. And what if I tell Apple that I need Mobile Hotspot toggle really close to me and I need an option to see the password because I keep forgetting it and I use it quite often. Well, in order to go and see the password for Mobile Hotspot, on Android you can just long press the button and it will bring up the settings menu showing all of the information about your mobile hotspot show the password and you can do anything it's just a regular settings menu on ios because it's so convenient you have to exit the control center you have to go in settings or use a search function just to search mobile hotspot and if you're lucky you will get to that menu section and settings but iphone it's not about inconvenience of course if you have even the smallest iphone 11 i know that iphone 12 mini and 13 minute exists but if i talk about iphone 11 and i need to reach to the top of the screen to get to notification panel and to the control center what I can do is easily swipe on the bottom of the screen and pull up the control panel or notification center. To be honest, it is not really comfortable because I keep pressing the app icon that is located at the bottom of the screen. How convenient, Apple. But let's look at something other than gestures, and that's customization. Well, I'm not talking about the themes, the fonts, the colors, and I know some people use Comic Sans as their main font in their phones. Good for you, that's your personal phone, you can do whatever you want with it. But for me, I need some colored themes, I need some rearrangements of the icons, and I can easily do it on any Android smartphone. What iOS allows you to do is create a blank boxes that represent icons using some walkarounds, and use them to create the blank space to make the same layout as you would do easily on Android smartphone. The only problem is that if you will try to move any icon in there, what will happen is the same thing as when you paste an image to a Word document. It will just spread to four pages and you will never recover it back. But what iOS fans might call a mess on Android is the top part of the screen, where you can find the icons from the apps that sent you notifications recently. On the right side, you can see what sound mode is on and if you have any timer or alarm set for the next day. But a person who is being easily distracted, I need those icons. You have an option on Android to turn them off. On iPhone, you don't have an option to turn them on. And if I swipe up a notification from some messaging app, and maybe in 10, 15 minutes, I usually forget that I got a message from someone. So I'm not gonna constantly check the notification panel on iOS, but on Android, I will see the small icon on top of the screen showing the latest icon from the app that sent me notification, reminding me that I had someone contacting me before. The other thing that it's kind of supposed to be a benefit of iPhone is Face ID. I know it's a small thing and I do have an iPad. 
I do use Face ID on iPad, but because I don't care, I just use it as a tablet for watching movies or for drawing. But iPhone, I use it every single day multiple times and I need to check my notifications constantly. And when an iPhone is laying on the table, I have to pull myself towards the iPhone or I have to pick it up, show him my face, and then it will unlock and show all of the notification. With Android, you can just tap your finger on the screen and unlock the phone to see all of the, your latest notifications. But Face ID is a minor thing. I do understand people that love it and got used to it over several years of iPhones having Face ID. But the thing that I do not understand on iPhones is the lack of multitasking. And if you will tell me that picture-in-picture -picture mode is multitasking, well, I'll force you to use it every single day. Because on iPhone, when you open a YouTube video and you want to browse Reddit or Twitter and have the YouTube app video mode on top of your screen, it will just cover the half of your UI. Well, not maybe a half of it, but one third for sure. Why? I know that Apple can do multitasking on iPad, but even there they decided to mess it up with Stage Manager, making a useless window-like experience with a lot of empty space around it. So even on my iPad, I just use the simple multitasking where you can split your screen in half or just like change the sides and that's it. But iPhone doesn't allow you to do this. On Android, I can easily pick up most of the apps that I have on my phone, open them up in split screen mode, vertically or horizontally, swap them around. I can also resize them and I can even save the pair of the apps that I use the most. So each time I wanna watch YouTube and browse Twitter, I click on one icon and the pair of the apps just opens up. So after ranting for a bit about iPhone and how I don't like iOS, I have to tell you that I don't hate iOS. I don't hate Apple. I don't hate Apple devices because I used to have a MacBook Air, which was an amazing device. I used to have multiple iPhones throughout the years and I still have an iPad that I use daily. Well, actually I'm having my script over here on my iPad, which is really convenient. But iOS is something not for me. The same way as Android might not be for you. If you wanna have a conversation with someone about the superiority of one platform to another, you have to be polite to each other, be nice. Because you have to be nice on this channel, channel called Played. If you wanna play games, you have to be nice. But of course, there should be some things that I loved, liked, or just was neutral on iOS. And the first thing is first party apps. The weather app, it looks amazing. The animations are smooth, nice. And there is a lot of additional information that the stock Android weather apps do not show you. The books app, I use it on my iPad daily. Well, not daily last couple of weeks, but I use it often on my iPad and having it on my iPhone syncing in between, it's really useful. And that's actually the first hook that Apple threw at me with their ecosystem. The podcast app is also quite good because recently I switched from Spotify to Tidal. I don't think even Tidal has any podcasts, but yeah, podcast app on iOS is also quite good. The UI is nice, it looks clean and it's easy to use. And more importantly, it's actually pre-installed on the phone. The other really beneficial pre-installed app on iPhone is Find My App. Not the Find My App app, but the Find My app, which allows you to find your iPhone or any other Apple device if you have lost it or if you forgot it at your friend's house. The good thing that you can actually access the Find My website, which is iCloud website, through any device. It could be iPad, it could be PC, it could be anything. So kudos to Apple for that. And also, if you are losing a lot of your things, you can buy Apple Tags, which is going deeper into the Apple ecosystem. But to not say about the devices that are available to support your iOS experience, it's just bad. So Air Tags are really convenient and therefore Find My App is also quite good. 
A small but really important to me thing that iOS has but Android doesn't, well at least one UI for some reason, is battery health. Of course both of the systems have a really extensive breakdown of your screen usage with every single app showing how many hours you spend on it, how much percentage of your battery taken. But on iOS you can also check the battery health. For some reason on my Galaxy I couldn't do that and I had to install a third party app which in my opinion is really strange or maybe if you know how to check it on Galaxy do let me know in the comment section down below. I'll really appreciate it because probably my next phone will be Galaxy. Because I touched a bit on the ecosystem I have to elaborate it on it a bit more. Even though it's not really applicable as much to me because I only have iPad and now borrowed iPhone, I think that if we talk about a single device, ecosystem doesn't matter. But with my Galaxy, I had a Galaxy Watch, I had the phone itself, and I had the Galaxy Bud. With Galaxy Buds, I don't have any problem connecting to the iPhone. However, if it was the first time when I connected the buds from the box, I would have a lot of trouble. Because the app was released 4 years ago and I don't think you can actually change the gestures on it right now using iPhone. So they still do work with iPhone, but they had to be first done on the Android device. The Galaxy Watch 4 unfortunately doesn't work with my iPhone. And I think the app only supports up to Galaxy Watch 3 and a couple of Samsung bands. But if you have a Galaxy Watch, unfortunately, you have to leave it on shelf. And probably if you're interested in smartwatches, I will talk about them a bit later in the other video. I'm not a fan of them. But if we talk about the ecosystem, it's not only hardware, it's also software. And Apple is great at it, even though I'm not really using it. A lot of people find it helpful. For example, iCloud with the Files app on your iPad, iPhone and MacBook where you can easily transfer the files in between the devices. The same way you can use Google Drive with most of the devices, but it's more integrated into the full ecosystem. AirDrop is also a good feature for a lot of people who have MacBooks, iPhones and iPads. They can transfer any kind of file in between them really fast, as well they can share the files with their friends. To be honest, I don't use it because I have an iPad and iPhone and I don't have many files to transfer in between. But I was always using a personal chat in Telegram just to send over the files from my PC to my phone or vice versa. So will it be hard for me to use iPhone device? Well, yes and no. Within a week of having iPhone, I found myself using my PC much more. Because I don't have multitasking, I browse Twitter and watch YouTube videos on my PC or on my TV. Because I don't have a Google Discovery page, I read news on my PC. Google page was easily accessible with one swipe to the left on my Android device, but nothing like this is available on iPhone except for the news app, which is the whole other story. And the last and probably the main thing is the use of notification, the actual structure of them on iOS and the control panel. I don't want to pull down two different things throughout the day with the, my finger reaching to the top of the screen or doing multiple gestures to bring it down. That's not just for me. And that's why I think I will be fine with using iPhone for at least a couple of months because I will just use my phone less. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions on any other experience with the iPhone, feel free to ask them in my Twitter, which you can find down in the description below. And let's talk about the whole iOS and Android, but please be polite to each other. Uh, don't spread the hate. Everyone is the tech enthusiast. Only people who are interested in tech will talk about Android versus iOS. So therefore, each and single one of us have something in common. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel. That I will really appreciate if you do that. If you didn't like the video, 
press the thumbs down button and tell me in the comments why you didn't like this video. Or feel free to send me a message on Twitter if you want to discuss any other tech or if you have any other question. Thank you so much and now go play some games.